It's literally just uh, his, his. He tells his grandmother that he quits, and she's like, "Thank God, I hate, I hates the poker." <laughs> and then he's, and then he's like, afterwards, he's like, "I'm back, baby." This should have been. <laughs> that's all you need to show. <laughs> I mean, you, it, it's the cameras are rolling, brother. You know, you do with that what you need to, what you need to do. You know? All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 822nd episode of the Poker News Podcast. We are at Level Nine Studio in Las Vegas. I am Chad Holloway, joined by Mike Holtz and Kinda England. We are here. We've got a great show. All set up. We're going to talk Nick Airball. We're going to talk our good buddy, Corey Eyring. We're going to play a fun game, some Poker News Plinko. It's going to be a fun one, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm stoked. It, uh, it's going to be... All right, let's just let's get into Nick Airball, right? <laughs> Little did we know our producer, Scott, who's in the booth, he's seen a picture of Nick Airball. You see it on the table here. He's like, oh, he's been here before. Right. Which was, I don't know what he was doing here. You know, he, some podcast or show, obviously. Sure, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe... Uh, I don't know how to spend a trust fund or something. There was like a <laughs> podcast on that. I don't know. <laughs> Is that how we got his money? I was going to like, do no, you know I didn't say he was in finance or he was like some sort of investment banker or yeah. something. I mean, you know? my nutsack's in finance. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. But yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> I actually had like a quite positive interaction with him. Um, I think it was during the Win WPT. Um, I can't remember. I just went up to him and I was like, Hey, I'm kind of nice to meet you. I like enjoy watching you on the streams. And I think like, I think he's gotten a lot better than he used to be. Like he used to be like really obnoxious and like kind of degrading people, making fun of people. Like there was one episode where he was kind of mean to let Lin Ling and I love her. She's like awesome. But I told him, I was like, Hey man, I appreciate like, you know, your presence now. Like you seem pretty cool at the table and like, you're fun to watch. I don't know. Mm. I, I think I know what you mean because I couldn't stand him when he first burst yeah. onto the scene. He, like, he was pandering for attention almost. Yeah. And I do see him dialed back. Mm -hmm. And I also like that he, like, he's been around. He's been entertaining. You know, he took his lumps in the Matt Berkey million-dollar heads-up match. And you see him now. He's on Hustler Casino Live, which is where he made a name for himself. But he's also been on High Stakes Poker. He's been playing on the Lodge live stream, which is what we're going to talk about in a minute. So I've come around to liking Nick Airball a lot more than I did initially. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mike, are you uh I, no, I I don't I didn't I I missed the redemption arc. <laughs> when, when did that happen? <laughs> I don't think it's total <laughs> redemption, but I think like kind of said he's getting a little bit better. Yeah, like some of the streams like that he was on early on on HCL and I watch a lot of HCL. I enjoy it. And like uh, the early on streams, it was just unwatchable because he was just so loud and obnoxious yeah. and you couldn't hear the other players. You couldn't hear the commentator and he was just making the whole thing about himself. I think he was drinking a lot. It seems like he's kind of changed his ways. He's not really doing that anymore. He's trying to play more serious poker and that's pretty cool, I think. I don't know. Pretty cool I, I, evolution. Interesting because <clears throat> this is my perspective, right? And it's... I he burst onto the scene, massive whale, loses a bunch of money. People are interested in hating on him. They want to see him lose, so he gets a bunch of views. That's how I always viewed it. The guy was kind of a dick to everyone. I thought he was, you know, really mean to multiple players. Mm -hmm. Um, had the thing with Mariana recently, had the thing with Matt Berkey. Uh just he he talks about tanking against Mariano, makes a big stink about it. Now he's tanking for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was a little absurd. And, but and and I don't know about him becoming a you know, trying to be a better player. I mean, in this hand, what what happens? He has deuce four off hearts. What, what what's the action pre? Yeah, so <laughs> we're not gonna go street by street because it was sure. you know, it was 20 minutes, but it was a big uh, ended up being, I think, a three-way pot. So it was Nick Airball with the deuce of hearts, four of hearts. You had Tesla with the nine of hearts, eight uh, eight of clubs, so offsuit, and stash in there with four of clubs, three of clubs. A classic cooler. <laughs> right? Well, the flop comes five, seven, king with two spades. I don't know the action, but the turn was an action card because it was the six of hearts. So everybody, um, except for airball, makes a straight. Tesla, the nuts, and stash, the low end of that. On the river, a three comes. There's no flush possibilities. So a four makes a straight. So now both airball and stash have a seven high straight, but of course, Tesla has the nine high straight, the absolute stone cold nuts. It's a $125,000 bet from Tesla. Stash calls and action then is on airball. Um, he's, you know, this is what you were saying, 20 minute tank. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we're not going to play the entire 20 minutes of, of the tank, but we do have a clip. I think it's like five minutes because it's as he's tanking on the river, he's up out of his chair. You get to hear how this played out because what was interesting about this is it's a live stream, but per rules, it's on a delay and it was on about a 20 minute delay. So you're actually going to see or hear Doug Polk get up and, and say, if we wait any longer, 
then this information is going to be broadcast. Right. And then there's, you know, it jeopardizes the integrity of the game. So you essentially put Nick Airball on that, like a two-minute clock. Yeah, it's the clock, calling the clock. I mean, in cash games, this, that still happens. I get that they were all... They were all really respectful of him, where you wouldn't see that. I, I feel like even in in super high stakes like that, I don't know. I've never played that high, but like, I can't imagine people like sitting around for twenty minutes doing nothing when you know, or they're stuck and they're in a big game. Well, yeah. I think everyone wants to uh, keep Tesla happy as well. Obviously, yeah. he's lost a record breaking amount of money. He's involved in the hand. Like, I, I don't know if you're playing that game. And you call the clock there, and Tesla gets pissed. Woo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. What an error! What an error! Well, let know. us. Uh, before we get any further, we're going to play the clip for you guys to uh, both watch. If you're watching us on YouTube, or if you're just listening to the audio version, you're going to hear uh, David Tuckman on the commentary. Here it is. I really don't know what I want to do. I just want to make a decision. Like I just, I don't care. I just want to make a decision. Twenty five is a big fucking bet for me, buddy. I almost just threw it in. <laughs> like the best hand I ever have, right? Do I have? It's the fifth time he stood up out of his chair. Doug is about to give the countdown. I think I'm going to pay it, Tesla. I think I'm going to pay it. I like how you identified that you've had stash beat, but I'm the I'm the variable here. <laughs> All right, I don't know how long the, the hand's about to go on there, so I'm just going to start a 60 second timer. You have a watch, right? All right. Clock is now is here? Okay, one minute yeah, 60 now. 60 seconds now. Probably have a little longer, but I don't want to risk the overlap. It's fine. Just let me know when I have 10, please. Yep, I'll count, I'll count you down. 45 seconds. Thirty seconds. Fifteen seconds. Your hand's going to be dead in ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, fold. one. He makes the fold. Yeah. Tesla is going to show the nuts. Stash sees Sorry, the bad news. Long. $353,000 pot goes to Tesla. Could have been more. The four clubs? Still a giant pot. Sorry, guys, that took way too long. Nick finds a way to get away at the buzzer. Best fold I've ever seen, too, man. I thought for sure I was getting way paid there. That was a really good fold, though. That's such a tough spot. I didn't think you were folding. I think you have to fold in the end. Because it's pretty, like one of them could have 8-9. Right? Zach's, Zach's, Zach's never got it. You don't think, you think he's just going to shove it? All right, so...
there you've seen the end of the the 20 minute tank we're going to talk about it in a minute but but once mike wakes up uh before i do i want to thank the sponsor for this episode of the poker news podcast and that is wpt global i know they've been uh, qualifying a lot of players to go on the wpt voyage which i will be on i'm very excited about that and right now if you download wpt global via poker news and make a deposit of at least $20, uh, you will receive a 100% up to $1,200 first deposit bonus match. Uh, and you can also get up to 11 tournament tickets landing in your account. Mike, I'm not an online guy, but that seems like a pretty decent deal. No, it's pretty awesome. WPT and WPT Global, everything they've been doing lately is like, I don't know, they're just fantastic. Um, it's interesting to see them break into the scene uh, like they have. So, man. I'm going to have so much FOMO when you all are on that cruise, too. Like, I love cruises, and I'm real sad I can't go. But, you know, the ladies event will happen, and so <laughs> yeah, we'll have to cool win stuff. that one. Well, let's talk that Nick Airball hands. I mean, ultimately, you saw he did end up folding correctly mm -hmm. um but a 20 minute tank is is like granted like you said kind of we don't play these stakes yeah so i don't know but i'm the type five minutes maybe and then eventually i'm going to call the clock on yeah somebody. i just feel bad too if i'm taking that much time i'm just like sorry guys hold on sorry guys hold on and then i'm just finally like fed up with myself for taking so long i'm like okay 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 I think it's pretty reasonable, <laughs> like uh, to have a, a longer than five minute tank. Yeah. And, uh, when someone bets an eighth of a million dollars on yeah. the river, and then <laughs> somebody calls the eighth of the million, like you're definitely allowed to think about it. But at a certain point, it's like my brother in Christ, what are we doing here? Like, make a decision, you know? So I, I don't know. I think uh, I think a lot of it is I don't know. <laughs> I, I always viewed it, Nick Airball is a big ego guy. I think a lot of it's uh, wanting to get airtime or whatever it is. I can't imagine like he was doing complex uh, calculations <laughs> there for 20 minutes and then finally arrived at the correct distribution of, you know, the weighted hands and yada, yeah. yada, you know. I, I didn't get the impression this one was like for show, right? Mm -hmm. I do think he was legitimately thinking about it. And I do think when it, for me, when I'm playing a game, it will, a lot comes into whether or not I'll call a clock, right? If somebody habitually tanks or takes a long time, sure. like Negrano always says, he's going to call it real quick. If they never take their time and all of a sudden this is the one hand that they were going to, then by yeah, all means, take yeah. it. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. no. I've never seen him play it. Like I said, I watch it a lot and I've never seen him do, you know, even remotely close to that before or even, you know, 30 seconds a minute. Like, he's a pretty quick player. So it's understandable, I guess. Like, give him the time. It was nice of everybody to give him the time. But it was kind of funny to see Doug come in and be like, hey, man, uh, the stream's going to catch up. you yeah. got to make a decision. No, Basically, like, dad coming in, calling the <laughs> clock, you know, like, let's yeah, go, yeah. let's go. <laughs> no, I've never seen that before. That was pretty cool, actually, that, <laughs> that happened. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, ended up being a $353,000 pot. Uh, uh, yeah, and he makes the correct fold. Nice yeah. fold. Yeah, good you know, fold. You like good to see fold. it, but... Man, what a crazy, crazy hand. Yeah, I mean, you just don't see that very often on a live stream. What a crazy stream, too. I didn't see all of it, but I was watching parts of it, um, kind of chatting with the girls while we were watching and playing online together. And uh, Tesla is super fun to watch, too. Like, I don't know. I hope he keeps playing on there. I know he had a rough day that day, but he certainly, Poker loves a character, and he's certainly a character, and he makes the game fun to watch. So you got to love people like that. I hope it, he keeps coming back. Here's a quick question for you, Kaina. Mm. Uh, I know this was The Lodge, but we talked about Hustler Casino Live, too. Does a, a character like Nick Airball or Tesla make a good contestant for Game of Gold, possibly? I think so, yeah. I mean, like, action players, that's what you want to see. Like, I think it would be it would be really fun if they did a mix of that, if they did a mix of, like, really action -y players versus, like, really, like, GTO wizards, you know, like, high rollers and everything like that. Like, it would be a good... That's what they should be. Poker is a very diverse community, so, like, a cast should be very diverse like that. And too. I know one of my favorites on Game of Gold was Andy Stacks. I didn't know oh, a lot yeah. about him, Andy's but... he's cool, yeah. He didn't get a whole lot of airtime either. Like, he got, like, super cooler... Like if you can get cooler during Indian poker, he for sure got <laughs> nah, cooler got, during Indian poker. Hard. Like, That's yeah, so it was rough to watch. Very and unfair, yeah. I, I was like a little sad too because I loved Andy Stacks from HCL and I didn't get to like play with him. I didn't get to interact with him a lot on the show. Like, we did have dinner a couple times afterwards, but it would have been cool to play with him, I think. And I didn't really get to. Yeah, yeah he's cool people. And uh, mm -hmm. but your your question before to kind of about Nick Airball in there, I think he would be great on Game of Gold, honestly. Yeah. I'm not really a Nick Airball fan, but I'll tell you what, hating on Charlie Carroll. Made me like uh, it, w it was nice to watch. Be like, oh, what's this idiot gonna do this week? Huh? <laughs> oh, there, oh, there's the shirt. Okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> show us your nipples. <laughs> yeah. Well, all this talk about right, like yeah. tanking at the table. 
I do want to ask this question and a little discussion about what are your pet peeves at the table or the most annoying things that you see come out of other players? What drives you nuts? Uh, showing showing your nipples at the table is definitely one of the <laughs> Wrong. Things I love about. to see a good set of nipples at the table, <laughs> man. Poke them through the shirt. Let's see what they got going on. Getting a little yeah. cold and nippy in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, holy, ho- holy cow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I remember uh, I'm playing like a 1500 PLO 8 at the WSUP and I turn around and there's like, there's like this mixed game pro and it's a, it's like, he's like a 65 year old, maybe a Greek or a Iranian man. Like, I'm not sure who he was. I can't remember his name. He's got his shirt completely off. It's around his waist and he's, he's getting massaged and I'm, I'm, I get moved to my seat and I'm like looking around. I'm like, nope, nobody else sees this. Like <laughs> we're, you all are just like, this is just what's happening. Like what's going on here? Yeah. I mean, there's been, I mean, there was something at the world series of poker last year where somebody was getting, too oh, much yeah. of a massage, oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, massage therapist name? gotten can, yeah. in trouble. Frank, 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 Frank yeah. the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> what about Call him uh, slipping? You know? <laughs> I didn't think that's what you were going to come with. What about the the dogs? Um. Oh, what about the dogs? Oh, sir, like this service? is something that is drives you a little nuts. Yeah, we talked you, about this talked before. About the yeah. Dogs okay. So I hate the fake service dogs at the table. I really do. There's nothing worse than when someone's at the table. They have a gigantic dog underneath the table. I'm not going to name names. <laughs> all right, but we all know in the folk community who, who you know. We know what's cooking, but they're literally saying at the table how the wind can't do anything. Yada yada. They can't. You know. Yeah, everyone knows that they're not real service dogs. I mean, and didn't you catch one of them like snatching food? One of the dogs like snatching a player's <laughs> there food. There was there was a dog who snatched some food. <laughs> there was a uh, there's a dog comes up. I'm sitting at the table. The dealer's like right there. One, one seat's here. One seat in, or uh, nine seat and eight seat. They're they're playing a hand. <laughs> and uh, guy comes up. Dog in between them. There's a dude's Chinese food there. Not <laughs> knocks the lid off. Starts eating. I'm looking. I'm like. What's happening here? I'm like, oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> he sees, he grabs the dog, doesn't say anything. I call the floor. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> What what kind of Mickey Mouse club are we running here? You know, <laughs> and the guy's like, "No, the dog didn't eat my wazuzu." I'm like, "The dog ate a bunch of your wazuzu." The old guy next to me is like, "He was eating your wazuzu." Kid. You know, like, yeah, it was crazy. It was I, actually crazy. I love wazuzu. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the, the sad thing is that the owner of the dog's super nice. He's such a nice dude, except for you know, I don't know the fact that the dog, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the dog. You know what I mean? Right. Fake service Lots dogs, service yeah. nipples, mm-hmm. which sucks. Mike's thing. Which sucks because real service dogs are such a such a great thing to have and and you know i i know people with them and they get so angry at people with fake service dogs because it makes them look you know what i mean they hate getting questioned when they're they really have disabilities that are you know what i mean yeah. so mm-hmm. what about you kind of pet peeves annoyances um i thought i think i thought of two things um I just sometimes hate a guy based on how he puts <coughs> chips in the pot. Like okay, I yeah. just not hate a woman, it. just a guy. <laughs> it's usually men. Like I mean, yeah. it's just like that adds up. <laughs> like all right, man, chill. Like I can't even explain it. There's different ways of tossing the chips in. It's not all just forceful. Like it's certain ways where I'm just like, mm, all right, man. Like let's relax. Well, a little I, I need bit. more description. I, I need to. Like, know. I don't like, want to offend you. I don't like the like. <laughs> Like so just kind of splashing yeah. in. Or I hate when like someone's like, and it's like the dealer has to pull it in. Like, let's oh, go. Yeah. Come on. Right oh, out yeah, here. Yeah. Let's do it a little bit better. I'm a big hands on guy. I'm always grabbing bets and tosses them in for the dealer and making change before I it's happening. I hate on the opposite end of that when players will like slowly take their bet out and then set it down. Yeah, that too. And then too. gingerly move their hand back. Like they're slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I is there a certain continent that those players usually well, come from? I don't know. It's I know. in the EPTs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I there love you go. I love my guy Yo Viral. Like I love him, but he does that. Yes. No, he did that on Game of Gold. Nah, yeah. He's he's swagged out. He can do whatever he yeah, wants. Yeah, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> no, it he's swagged out. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't hate it as much that coming out. He has him. his glasses upside down. His he's like dripping drool. He's just like <laughs> forty six thousand. He like pushes it in slowly. I'm like, dude, I he's like uh I won't take t- Teddy KGB. A you know, young Teddy. You know, he's way more swagged out than Teddy yeah. KGB. Yeah, no, he's a different level. Yo, viral's that dude. <laughs> yeah. 
I thought of one more too, and sure. now it just like literally flew out of my head. I'm really trying so hard, but so we got, we got to, we got to real. It. <laughs> it probably was when you were talking. I thought of it. I'm like, oh man, what that that really sucks. It'll come back to you. Yeah. I'll tell you one of mine. Okay. And okay. This isn't more from a player. It's actually something that the dealers do. And look, I love the dealers. I don't like abuse to dealers. No, uh, they the worst, work really yeah. hard. But one thing I hate that dealers do as a player is, let's say you go all in, mm-hmm. and I call you, and just it's very clear that I have you covered because you've went all in for 10,000 sure. and I've went in, you know, the dealers then that like get the pot right first. Like, let's just oh, see yeah. the cards, uh, run it yeah, out yeah. because there's oh, no need God. to count if, if I win. And you know, what's mm-hmm. so funny is playing at the win recently is you never see that. So like I, I go into the WSOP this year. It's going to be great when uh, there's seven of us going, just put, just, uh, just put, uh, <laughs> the dealers, the just let me get it right. Just let me get, you know, I know, now, yeah. I know it's so annoying. I, if, uh, the one I hate the most, and it continually, it gets me so often, and it's my fault that it gets me, but if you have like five or six dealers in a row that are great, and they every time someone raises, they say, raise, 3,500, whatever it is, and then a new dealer comes in the box, and they don't say raise, So and then some, I'll, I'll see somebody next to me look at their cards, and I'll look over at them, <laughs> specific situation just happened, and then they put out 5,500, and I think they raised, so I three bet them, not realizing that the guy open here you know what I mean so we actually had a situation like uh, with a dealer like that in the ladies event a couple years ago at the WSOP and it was like dark it was hard to see the chips are this kind of blend into the table and I had like the ladies I didn't even say anything the ladies were like hey man can you call the action we can't see what people are doing and he just like ignored us and like did it like again for three more hands they're supposed to call the action and I was like man are you tired? Are you feeling okay? Like, what's going on today? Can you just do it, please? And he still didn't. So, I, you know, me being the uppity Karen, I can be sometimes. I called the floor over. I was like, man, can you just tell this guy? Like, it seems like he doesn't want to be here. And he said something, <laughs> like, mean about ladies' events. Like, I hate dealing ladies' events. I, I was don't like, think that's well, let's Karen. get you the fuck out of the box then, man. Holy like, and we shit. did. Like, the floor pulled him. It, it, like, she did. She was like, okay, man, go home. Like, you know, like, you don't want to be here. You don't want to, like, deal to the ladies. Why would you not want to deal to the ladies? Like, I'm sorry. Okay. I can't think of it. I can't think of any reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is okay, whatever. There's, it's not I know. Kind of England. It's, I know. Yeah, I'm Karen. aware. England is your, is, I'm yeah. aware. I can be a little bit of a Karen at the table. I like no, rules. I can too. Like I like when the rules are followed. Yeah. I have. I have corrected a dealer and been wrong. I will admit that. Like oh, me I am, too. <laughs> I have been wrong once, you know, like, so it's okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, like that was just like an interesting situation where all the ladies at the table were like, what the fuck? We're having a great time. Could you just say raise? It, it like, is in the rule. It, like the dealers are supposed to announce the raises, right? I mean, I believe so. I, I, like, yeah. They say, am I mistaken? They, they're supposed to say, you know, like raise. Yeah. And then if you want the amount or something. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I like, I, I'm, I was like 99% sure of that. But yeah. like, I feel, I hate when the dealers don't announce it. I'm, I just, I hate that. I mean, Especially I'm, lighting, lighting and chips, like yeah, can be yeah. certain colors. So it's many hard places, to tell. so many places are just like, here's the the winter 2014 chip set. And it <laughs> matches the felt exactly. <laughs> this uh, one's black. Sorry, this the one's rate's less high. Black. This one's gray. This one's less gray. Gray. This one's white. No, this literally. one's less white. Some like, places will have will have twenty five Ks will pop out, and there's multiple <laughs> different colors. Shout out the WSOP. You know, it's yeah, it's wild. It's like no, nah, we're not. I, we, it's not like we're paying millions of dollars in rake or anything. Okay, I thought I thought, I thought of my other oh, one too. I, I did. Back. I came right. back. I I really dislike when people force other players to count their chips. Like mm. they don't have to. Like if you can see my Wait, chips. What do you mean force? Like how much do you have? And like all you really have to do is like show them. Like if your chips are visible, mm-hmm. but but some players will press like, and you know, maybe this is an online thing. Like, yeah, I have to know exactly how much you have. Well, man, I'm showing you how much I have. Like, I don't want to break. I don't want to count. I mean, I can do it. Like I tell people I'm like, okay. Yeah. But early on when I started playing, I didn't like it. It was uncomfortable for me to be like, uh, well, 50K. An, like, I you know, an interesting <laughs> take on that actually as an online guy. Like, yeah. cause I really do when I need to know the exact amount of big blinds. I know you, have. you do, but I need like, to know. like, but so that's not part of the game. You no, know? no, I, I'm with you. So like, I understand if a play, if I ask and a player just moves and shows me, that's totally fine. But he just needs to know that I'm not that intelligent and counting. I'm that's not me, baby. I don't have an abacus or anything. So like, it's going to take me a second of being like, and that's and um, carry the one. 73, 74 blinds are... All right, 29 bigs. Hell yeah. Well, that's different from Fold. like literally <laughs> like, like I've seen people hassle like just tell me how much you have. Just count it. How much do you oh, have? Oh yeah, like, you, you can't you can't you're that forcing bothers me yeah. and I I'm a Karen again when that happens and I'll be like, "Hey man, he doesn't have to." You know? Sure, like yeah. move on. 
Like, I mean, I just think that because like some players will be like new. They don't want to talk during a hand. They're showing you and it's your job to be a mic and be like, one, two, three. OK, <laughs> yeah, like, like as long as they're as long as you yeah. don't have a stack that's like more than exactly. 20 or if you have like a 13 and a 12. Well, you know, asking and questions is a different story, like about how high are your stacks, you know, that kind of thing. But like sure, yeah. or like in between hands, sometimes I'm not sure I'll be like about how just much another you're playing, reason you to know? digitize all the chips. Yeah, well, yeah. anyway, that's just my I'm, I'm such a as, Karen as somebody who's live reported poker tournaments for more than a decade i've gotten really adept at looking at a stack and coming up like i just know it's just oh yeah nature. advantage yeah. advantage reporter advantage yeah. i, yeah, it's, I it's wonder like Rain sometimes Man too. when he drops all the uh, was it toothpicks and he's you know it's like, like you're like mm, like, la- like six five no. lefty <laughs> was over at the other the uh, main like eyeballing i'm like how can you even tell i was like 150 he's like i know i know i'm like oh, <laughs> all right no, you i'll down. be the type if i'm a player and then somebody goes all in and another player asks, how much is it? Like, I've already seen it. And the dealer will start to go to count and I'll be, oh, wow. I'll say 145 or about, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe I'm off by 1,000 or 500, but like. Oh, you're saying an all in. Yeah. Oh, so oh, you're, I th- you're I a Karen you in just, that like, way. Went to grab no, 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 no. That's, like, a, that's a bit of a Karen thing too. Cause sometimes I'm like, let the dealer count it. You know, like. <laughs> no, I think you're the Karen on that one. <laughs> I'm super Karen. I'm always Karen. Uh, I, I always care. try to like. It. It, I'll take it. It depends, right? Like if the player is like um, someone I'm not friendly with or who is very serious or whatever, I'll just let the dealer do it but if it's someone i'm like boys with or whatever and i've counted it, i'll be like it's like 141 bro you know <laughs> like well, i don't know anything to speed up the game like yeah, right. true. Uh, I, true. I, I, you know what i hate is i like i'm really a rule follower i like i like to have uh you know I, I hate when someone's pressing the rules or there's like a four-way pot and they're like trying to get information from someone by talking or something like that and it's like the dealer's not doing anything and i don't want to say you know what i mean yeah. like it's a whole thing but um yeah, that's yeah. yeah I mean, it sounds like we all have a lot of poker pet peeves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people watching do too. Yeah. Hit us up on Twitter. Let us know or X now. Uh, what it, what are your poker pet fe- peeves? We'll leave that for now. We'll put a pin in it. We're gonna play a little game Ooh. here in just a second. Okay. We're gonna play some poker news plinko, and I'm gonna tell you how it's gonna work. After somewhere around here, you're gonna like, subscribe to this, you know, poker news right over there near the dolphin over here that. somewhere. That's maybe what I'm thinking, that's where yeah. they'll put it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> they'll probably put it over here. Now. No, I don't think so. All right, so Poker News Plinko. This is one of my thrift store finds, by the way. It's so sick. How much did you pay for that? It was like $3.99. I might have got it on a half off day. I don't know. So but I'm fire. like, I'm going to get it for something. <laughs> and we got it. Brought it in because here's what we're going to do. So Poker News Plinko is going to work like this. Whenever we're in studio, the three of us, we're going to play. We're each going to get two of the pucks to drop. And we're going to keep track of the score. At the very bottom, you can get 100, 500, 1,000. Or if you get it in the middle, get 10,000. Around the 10,000s, there's also zeros, right? And we'll get two pucks. We're going to score points. We're going to keep track of those points. Whoever has the least amount of points in the episode before the World Series of Poker starts is the loser. Okay. And then the two winners get to choose an embarrassing outfit that the loser has to wear one day in a right. WSOP tournament. Man, Chad, I'm really excited to pick an outfit for Mike together. That'll be really yeah, fun. Yeah, oh man, I, that'll I mean, be, I was I'll say, be really like, embarrassed. Guys, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we did a practice run before, though, and Mike hit it square in the middle, but that's like yeah. he used up his one time, so it's not going to no, happen. Again. I believe in the heart of the cards. <laughs> well, how about this? Why, why don't you two stand up, <laughs> okay. come over here, I'll sit for now, and I'll, I'll commentate this. Soon? Yeah, I think you'll probably okay. have to take them off, but I'll, I'll commentate this. Just uh, grab a puck and uh, go. There's no... uh, Okay. I'll go first and then I'll get out of the way. If per chance it falls off, we'll just go again because that does happen from time to time. So... Oh, there it went, fell off. Just try again. Hopefully, this doesn't happen like ten uh, times in a row for us. In my when mind. I was practicing, yeah. And if you're listening to this, I'll, I'll tell you. Ooh, 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 oh, ten thousand in the first one. The wow. Okay. I practiced this at home. Literally, like fifteen uh, things. So okay, all right, let's, let's take that out. I've all never right. gotten the ten thousand before. Uh-oh. Okay, first okay, all right, all right, all right. It's number two bullshit. <laughs> it's a learning. Yeah, and then stand good. out of the way so they can see when okay, it goes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. All right, it's going. It's it's oh, it's going to the side. It's not gonna five hundred. Okay, all right. All right. On. Hold on, you're gonna get one more. I'm gonna. I'll put mine. Uh... Come on, baby. All right, five hundred. Oh, okay. So we're tied up. All right, kinda. All right. We go. If you get another 10,000, you're going to be a uh, huge Oh, no, I, I gave her the fucking secret. Oh, that one's going to fall off. Oh, no. No. Nope. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. All right, 1,000. Okay, so right. That's a yeah, you're going to have 11,000 at the end of you're, this you're episode. You're automatically in first place, no matter what occurs. For now. We've got many right. episodes, and we each get two every time. All right, Mike, you had 500. You get 100, you're at 600. 
Wow, what a disaster. <laughs> I mean, there's no zeros yet. Whoops. You're all right. All right, last one. And, oh. oh. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, Zero. Nice. I'm so competitive that this oh, is, I'm, in, so I'm enraged right now. I mean, you're actually, I'm in last place. I have No, I'm familiar with what occurred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's right. upsetting me that I only get Wait, two Wait, can we recap it? Um, again, uh, Kaina has 11,000. 11, yeah. Mike has 600? I have 600, 600 And Chad yeah. has 500. 500. Okay. Uh, the, the rage burns deep <laughs> within me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Well, we've got a long time before the WSOP, so we're going to get more shots at it. Ooh, you know, just sink two ten thousands <laughs> in, okay. in a night. You'll be all right. So, all right, that's poker news, Plinko. We're gonna have some fun with that in, in the coming episodes. Uh, but kind of out to an early lead. All right, let's go. let's go to the next uh, little topic. We're gonna talk the other gentleman who's right here on the table. One Corey Irene. He is just an up and comer, or maybe he's arrived in the vlogging space because he's doing something that is really exciting. He is basically gambling it up. Throughout 2024, and whatever his bankroll is at the end, he's going to come to Vegas, he says, and put it either on red or black on a roulette wheel. He's trying to get to 500000 so that that's, that uh, spin would be for a million bucks. I mean, pretty ambitious, pretty uh, pretty wild. 500K in a year. That's it, rough. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. And he, he's it's his entire net worth. He's putting it all on the line, and he's documented it in these very entertaining vlogs that, uh, that I've found. Um, I actually caught up with him last week. I teased it at the end of last episode that I was going to sure. chat with him. And uh, I've got some clips that I want to go ahead and show, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about them. Um, now, the first one, he's going to talk about the bet, about exactly what's going on, and uh, give you a little... A little peek at that. Let's put that in right there. Yeah, the goal is to have five hundred thousand at the end of the year, and whatever, however much I have at the end of the year on December thirty first, I'm just going to put it on red or black. That's uh, that's insane. It reminds me of the old days of you know, like uh, Binion's Horseshoe when they would take any bet for any amount. So yeah, where does the bankroll stand right now as we're talking? You want spoilers? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I, let's hear it. Uh, all right. Well, shout out to Jason Somerville. He actually loaned me five k. We are in the fucking hole. Mm -hmm. Um, so not only do we have to, it's going to be a little difficult to gamble anything on the thirty first if I don't have anything to gamble. Um, I'm going to go there with minus five thousand, and I'm going to have the casino pay me at this point. <laughs> so we have some we have some work to do. I mean, I, I think myself and everybody, like, we want you to hit that 500,000 mark because what an insane spin that would be. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> imagine going from less than nothing. I I owe someone money right now to having a million dollars within a year. That'd be sick. All right. So there you have it. That is the bet. But as I said, he's documenting this in his vlogs. I don't know if you guys have seen him, but after we played on Poker Night in America with him, which we'll talk about later, I went and binged a lot of his vlogs. <laughs> yeah, and I watched I'm all of them too. Yeah, they're really entertaining. I watched like one or two, but yeah, I haven't I haven't kept up with it. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of Ryan DePaulo. Ryan DePaulo, yeah, that's yeah. what I said. But last time, um, yeah. I, I love early Ryan DePaulo, and it feels like he's just embodying that D-Gen vibe too. Like my whole net worth, I'm putting it on the table. It's like, well, but like, how many times can you do that? But it's still, it's a pretty cool concept, and he's making it entertaining. He's doing other stuff too. He's not just like you know he he like filmed. Didn't he like film like making breakfast and like getting ready with his roommates <laughs> or something like that too? I like yeah. that kind of stuff. So it's funny you say that because yeah. I wanted to give a little taste to our viewers about what his vlogs are like. Uh, so we're just going to watch a minute of, of one of them, <laughs> which involves breakfast, but here's uh, the sort of vlogs that uh, Corey Irene is putting out. Last night we played a poker game where I was in for $10,000. I nearly lost everything, and we're doing it again tonight. Hello. We are currently in Las Vegas. I'm finally on a functioning schedule because I was up for 24 hours last night. Vegas in itself is so funny to me. They took all of the generates and placed them in the middle of a fucking desert. <laughs> I was looking at the breakfast menu. $17 for an omelet. My buddy Tanner has chickens back home. He and his mom give me two dozen eggs for free. If Tanner came to Vegas and saw the price tag for eggs, he'd lose his marbles. 
My god, god darn it, damn it, I played Shepard's, what the fuck? Oh, you want any flavor? Additional five. If you want a lot of flavor, it's ten. It has to be relatively healthy and rich in protein, because we're bulking. Let's get after it. Dude, that's hysterical. <laughs> I found a cheap breakfast. I thought it was Dunkin's at first, but considering it's Burger King, I think the most likely scenario is they ordered it last night when they were pissed drunk, fell asleep, got delivered, no answer. Still hilarious that it's right outside my door though. All right, if you want to watch more of Corey's vlogs, you can do so on YouTube at Corey underscore Iring. That's E-Y-R-I-N-G. Uh, I love them. Like, I've been enjoying these. And I think, Mike, we're going to appear on an episode maybe from that uh, Poker Night in America that we've played. Uh, yeah, we're, we're on the, uh, is it the one, are you on the one, his, his most recent, the episode 10? I'm on there. No, I, I don't think I'm on there yet. No, maybe that's, I am. no, no, wait. Do we play both episodes with him? No, you did. I only played one. Oh, okay. So. All right. So, okay. Then the A. Yeah, ours is was next to appear Was one of them like then. cash and one of them was a tournament? Like yeah. One of them was a sit and sit go. And go yeah. and the, wait. It was, a, it was a cash game sit and go tournament. No, that's the hybrid. one. Oh, is it? That's the one. That's I his, just haven't his, seen that one. His then. last episode 10 is, yeah. Well, then I guess that's something there. I got to watch tonight mm -hmm. when yeah, I get home. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. He plays with, he calls me Mr. Clean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm about, I'm about it. You know what I mean? I like that, like kind of hinted, like it's not just poker. He shows some, but he's showing breakfast. He's showing himself degening with his friends by betting a thousand dollars on which elevator bank is going to strike <laughs> first. Yeah. You know, that's pretty crazy. Not the wisest. Like the guy's not yeah. practicing bankroll management. Clearly, no, yeah, 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 of course, of course. And uh, how old is he? He's young, right? Yeah, I think he's 22, 23. Yeah, so that's Sorry. Oh, no, really? maybe maybe he's I in his he late twenties. Yeah, I think maybe yeah. actually I think late twenties. Now that I think about it, okay. I think I asked him that on my full interview. I think he said maybe twenty seven. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, 27, 28, but I, I don't know. I, I could be just pulling that out of the air. Mm. But as he, he's got this goal, right? 500,000 wants to spend. He's in the hole right now. <laughs> <He's> yeah. <laughs> what did he start with? Do you know? Uh, I think I want to say like 2,000, but I, I don't know He only know started that for with sure. 2K, really? Maybe it was more. I thought it was more than that. It could be. I, like, But he's, you know, I've seen on his vlogs he's had 2,000 and he's mm -hmm. taken it all down to the table. So like, sure, and he's not yeah, yeah. afraid to degen it, which... Uh, I used to do when I was in my 20s if occasionally now that I'm at 41 yeah. like I don't have that in, that gamble in me anymore he's stone dead to get the 500k <laughs> there's no chance right you can't I mean you can like let's say it's a slot for a, for a half a milli burger like alright you did it you know but I think uh, if he can, if he keeps degening I don't know. I don't know how you get to 500 birds. It's so many birds. You know? Well, especially when you're <laughs> negative 5,000, right? Yeah, yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. like, no, I'm not going to go I, rob I'm the not, casino or something. It's not impossible, right? I mean, it's he could bink a big tournament, and I hope he does. That'd be super sick. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hope he does really well. I hope he gets 317K and then he puts it all in black or red, smacks it, doubles it up. GG, run the town, you know? That's what I hope happens. But. I don't know, man. Negative five k is a whew, that's a that's an uphill battle. I'm really excited to see the, the future vlogs to see what uh, what my boy's cooking with. Yeah, that's yeah. What, what I love is he's letting us on the ride with him. Yeah, like, I think yeah. this journey of his is going to make him, you know, a superstar in the the poker space. Right? Well, now I'm going to have to go catch up because I mean, I'm going to be honest. I I like to watch poker. I like to watch live streams, but I'm not like so into the poker vlogs anymore. I used to be. I like the D-Gen vlogs. Like, <laughs> yeah. if you're going to go ahead and bet elevator banks with your friends, that's fun. I'm going to watch that. You know, like, let's go put $1,000 in a machine and fast spin. Yeah, I'm going to watch that. Like, I just, I don't know why. I just like the poker vlogs. Like, they don't, I don't know. I just don't enjoy them as much as I used to. But I still would like to watch it. I'm going to go and try and catch up. Yeah, I, I like Corey. I hope he does mm -hmm. well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got two more clips that will kind of illustrate the point we've been talking about the first we're going to run them back to back the first one is him basically talking and openly admitting about his uh degening which isn't a secret like that's what his vlogs course, are about yeah, yeah. uh so we get into that a little bit and then he actually told me in our interview a really fun story about uh how he was going to quit poker mm -hmm. um and then told his grandma that and then i kind of had to backtrack <laughs> yeah, on it. it's yeah. a fun little grandma story so uh let's play those right now back to back i when i was growing up when i was you know a wee adolescent i was like man these guys are idiots how do they just go with all their money and then lose everything? Man, what if you guys deserve it? And now that I'm here, I'm like, dealer, one more time, double down. <laughs> one more time. I, I promise this is the one. No, okay, okay. Last one. Like, I stand in front of an elevator and somehow risk 66% of my net on a fucking 
the hand of blackjack. That's just absurd. So I understand now. Last year, I uploaded a video called I Might Quit Poker, which was 100% authentic. I was genuinely considering walking away from the game because the swings are brutal. They suck. But during that stretch where I was taking time away from poker, my grandma came to visit. And I was like, Grandma, I'm done playing poker. And she said, oh, thank God. I'm so <laughs> glad you're done with gambling. <laughs> and fast and then i uploaded that video and it shot up to number one out of ten best performing video of all time i gave my grandma a call i was like Brr. grandma we're back <laughs> <laughs> all right so there you have it if you want to see the full interview it's about 15 minutes long you can check that out on poker news i will embed the video in the article to this show um it's worth it. I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do in the poker space. I'm glad we got to play with him. That was my first time meeting him was our poker night in America experience. Mm -hmm. Didn't know who he was, you know, and I've been around the poker space for a while, but once I got to know him, I went and watched the vlogs. I'm like, I gotta, you know, I gotta do more with this guy. We got to talk about him. That's why we're featuring him pretty heavy in this episode. Did you enjoy playing with him on poker night in America? <laughs> well, I was just like, nah, man, that <laughs> dude sucked. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, yeah, of course I did. It was great. I won the whole thing. So of course, I'm, yeah, you, busted, like, you should uh, ruin the episode. Is it already aired? I mean, it's going to be on. Yeah. This is, uh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. yeah he yeah. busted me. Yeah, yeah. In a brutal, brutal fashion. Oh, he just, yeah. In a, in a true, uh, in a flip where I, I did all my abilities to curse Chad um. Yeah, work. The juju was on my I side. I had sixes. He had ace king. He did not pair an ace. Oh, were you king. guys heads up? Or? Yeah, all oh. in parade. All in parade. Wow. And uh, let's just say the poker the, news violence. The river put eights and tens on the board. Ah, oh. so kicker got that yeah. counterfeit. Gets there the dirty yeah. way. That's how Mike <laughs> does it. <laughs> all right, let's just pull it. Uh, <laughs> the, we'll pull it back with the tweet of the week and. Um, <laughs> What are we laughing about? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, sorry, guys. No, no, no. I looked <laughs> over her and her <laughs> face, her face was literally like this. It was like, yay, what did he say? What did he say that? He said it. It's. I don't know what happened. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I got, we got to leave this in the episode now. Like, this is gotta stay. It's all fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> just Mike makes me laugh looking at him. Sometimes I just crack myself up. It yep. is what it is. I can't explain it. Yep. <laughs> all, <That's>, right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's, Corey, good luck. <laughs> good luck, you. Corey. Yeah, I'm sure you're watching. We um, love your content. Um, I think yeah. I just blacked out for a little bit there. <laughs> All right, I want what to do happened? one one last one segment that we'll probably do more of occasionally on the Poker News Podcast. We talked uh, uh, last episode, I think, about how I like to thrift in Las Vegas. We mm. talked earlier how I found this Plinko board at a thrift store. And if you follow me on Twitter, at Chad A. Holloway, uh, I do tweet out a lot of my poker thrift store finds. So I thought it would be fun for us to do a little segment. I'm going to show the tweet on the screen, and I'll describe it for those who are listening, of what I found. And then I want you guys to give your take. Is it something you would buy? And then I want you to guess whether or not I bought it. Okay. All right. So I was at a Goodwill and I seen a hat hanging on the rack, a black hat, black hat, which we'll, we'll show here. And it said Blez on it. And I thought Blez, like when I hear Blez, I think Jared Blesnick, mm. right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I went and I looked at the hat, but it didn't say anything about poker or Blesnick, but it had a website. And so I typed in the website on my phone and sure enough, it took me to Jared Blesnick's uh, sports card breaking business, which yep. is hugely sports yeah, sports <laughs> two cards. words for you. Yeah. And uh, so I, it's there, three ninety nine, dollars not on sale. This one, not half off. Right. It was new. It still had the tag on it. You can see that in the picture. <laughs> yep. I believe it was a flex fit, which I do need. What do you guys, would you have bought it? $3.99 not on sale. <laughs> <laughs> this is Goodwill we're talking about here. Yeah. The Plinko was $3.99. <laughs> That's true. Can't wear the Plinko though. Uh, you can't. So, I don't wh know. What are you doing? I would have bought it? it probably just because you always buy some fun stuff. Like whenever you find poker memorabilia, you buy it and it's fun. And I don't know. Yeah. yeah I think I you bought it. I would have, I would have bought it for sure. Because number one, B. Les, Brock Lesnar, what? And then second <laughs> off, uh, yeah, I, he, Blesnick's cool, you know? I like him. I played with him in the 3K PLO recently. He was a cool guy. Nice yeah. to talk to him. 
would have bought it just to support the guy, you know? <laughs> and uh, I would say, did you buy it? Of course you didn't, because if not, if you did, I would have already... To support him? Or like, oh, like, not like... I'm, in my mind, that went like financially, like, oh, like his goodwill <laughs> giving like Blaz like a third of the No, I'll, 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 I'll pop it out. <laughs> no, it has the website on it. I'll pop it. Yeah, I'll yeah. Pop support PLO, in a different way you know for I mean? me. <laughs> it just was yeah, funny. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, yeah. I did not end up buying this. No, I know. Oh, I know. It's, yeah, it's crazy. And it's yeah. because of this, uh, I think... When he did that sports card interview, mm-hmm. in the moment, I really hated it. I really just was like, I'm a, I, oh, okay, I'm a big in uh, to like having a modicum of respect for the game. Yeah, and if you get some TV time or if you're a winner, to you know give the winners interview. And at the time, did he not give a winners interview? He did, but he not he made talking. it about sports cards. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, which, but uh, to be fair, I did find the humor in it, and I actually, as you said, yeah. Jared Blesnick. Awesome guy. Every time yeah, I've interacted cool. with him or what have you. But I just thought, hmm, you know. Oh, I thought he was a gangster. One. I well, thought that shit was so gangster. Like, he, he used his. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Using the time. Go ahead. No, I thought, if listen, if there's no time banks involved, nah, that's corny. Don't do that. But since he has an allotted amount of time banks and he's looking at the camera and he's just like, yeah, you know, uh, I think we'll break some sports cards open. Uh, dealer, time back. Because he's like, he's <laughs> like, see. he's oh, like, I play fast. 10K. Oops. I play yeah. fast. So no. I'm going to use my time banks. I play fast normally. I've got all these time banks. Let's open some sports cards. No, he like, literally, I, I, I actually like funny. that yeah. one. Yeah. I felt like he was Vince Carter in the Olympics, just dunking over the dude. You know what I mean? It's like, and then he ran the table with the tournament. He just smashed everyone. Like, <laughs> I thought if, if he gets eliminated in third, that shit's hella corny. He gets first. <laughs> Bow down. down to the king. You well know used I mean? time banks. I yeah, guess. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, well, anything but first corny first place. That's that dude. Here's the good news. I usually hit up the same Goodwills, and if it's still there next time I go, and it's the color of the week, which means it's half off. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna buy it. Okay, buy well, it. Bring I'll, it. I'll wear it on air. What if fiscal I do. responsibility? <laughs> hey, you gotta. It's gotta be half off. <laughs> it's, it's bankroll management. It's true. It's yeah, actually. It's it's funny. People relate. You'll relate. Every poker player relates. Is I'll go somewhere and there'll be something that's 40 bucks. And I'll be like, oh, I don't know. Should I really spend 40 bucks on this? And then I'm like, on on a PLO, I flop a flush draw on straight draw. And they're like, here, take my thousand. Let me right, get it yeah. in as fast yeah. as can be. It's just a sick how money works. Right. In the like if, if they like are charging me shipping, I'm like, no, thank you. Like I'll find it somewhere else, you uh, know. But I'm like, oh, fast spin five hundred dollars in Planet Moolah? Okay. <laughs> no, nah, that None of that happens to me anymore. My Uber Eats bills are crazy. I have an NFT as a profile picture. I don't know what's going on anymore. Yeah, no, no, I, I uh, yep, I don't know what you're talking about at all with that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, NFTs is not a cryptocurrency, but it did remind me, like, Bitcoin's at an all-time high. Is mm-hmm. this going to be good for poker? Is this going to be a no, good no, World Series so, because of that? It's already been so good for poker. The fields are huge right now. Everybody's out there firing multiple bullets. You can tell, like, every table you're at, people are all talking about it, like, yeah, it's good. We're all we're all in the. Uh, I think Bitcoin's very. Uh, a lot of the it's, poker players are are into it. You know what I mean. I want to give props to Chris Hunichin, Big Hooney. It yeah, hundred percent. Back in 2010, 11, I just remember him telling poker players. He told like I was there. I was at AEPTs. He's like, hey, you should buy this. It's a hundred or two hundred dollars or whatever it was at the time. And I didn't obviously regret that. You know, you know I'm sure a lot of people didn't. And yeah. he did, and he went all in on it. And 100%. Big Hooney, you know, is is living large. So. Yeah, good for him, man. Good for That's him, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and his parties are awesome. So yeah, yeah. I got Thanks in really me. late, so but still happy about it. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk uh, real quick. Last story we'll talk about in this episode because it broke as we were driving here. I think at least mm-hmm. somebody sent it to me. Kevin Martin. We were talk. We talked in the past episode hey, about who how sent he, that to you. Mm-mm. I got actually from several people. That's usually how oh, it works okay. with me. You know? uh, right, um, right. I forgot about the popularity yeah. aspect. Well, yeah. it's the, the we're losers. News yeah. aspect. Wait, wait, wait. Mm. Team Hot Dog sent it. Mm. Oh, thank, no. thank you, Team Hot Dog. Love you guys. Uh, but Kevin Martin was streaming his life. He ended up going for about 500 hours as he tried to turn zero into 5,000, but finally threw in the white towel. Um, I think he ended up saying he profited like 500, but yeah. I think it just ended up like, I, I, do you think he expected to be done by now? Real fast, should you explain to the viewers what Team Hot Dog is? For, <laughs> you some for context? those who are incredibly I, confused, <laughs> why you just said go Team Hot Dog? Oh, I thought I mentioned. I thought we talked about it on previous episodes. But my Team Hot Dog is my uh, my 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 girlfriend's here in um, Las Vegas. We uh, 
Uh, we go to South Point a lot. So if you want to see us, uh, we were usually at South Point at some point in the week, usually in the weekends. And uh, we're playing the ladies event, the lips event as a team. There's a team event on uh, April 4th. And the five of us have signed up as a team. And we were like, we love hot, um, South Point. We love the hot dogs. Um, we should just be team hot dog. Um, and, you know, so we did. We're the South Point hot dogs. And so now we call ourselves the hot dogs. And South Point has been nice enough to like, you know, embrace that and sponsor us and we're we're really happy so uh my girlfriends are team hot dog i don't know i, I, I kind of stumbled through I that i'm sorry i regret asking i know i i, I, anything about I this. actually <laughs> wish i had uh i i started to say things i didn't want to say no no i caught that i caught that i could have saved you but i just i, I let, let the dumpster happen. fire occur. let it yeah. happen it's yeah. okay but anyway like my girl group sent the sent the, the tweet about Kevin Martin and I was like, oh man, this just happened. We were talking about it too because he, I guess, was going to call it at 500 hours, but um, he only he only played for like 150 hours right. or something. Yeah. But call, he, call back to when I said he's he's deeply regretting this yeah. in episode one or two of the podcast. Uh, yeah, he, <laughs> it seems like a crazy idea. He said his rate was like $3 an hour. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's increased but, to five. Like the last tweet I saw, it was like five fifty an hour. Look well, at me go. That's what happened when you play on international sites where you're playing with player pools that are legitimately like three dollars an hour is a functioning wage. It's a livable wage. Like you're just gonna get a lot of better players than micro stakes where in America you get thirty five people who are literally wasted with one eye open just Jamming he, it in there. You he know did what I mean? say the the cash games is where it was at for him. The tournaments, uh, not so much. I oh, think okay. that's that's the risk. That's the variance, right? Like he could have got to five k by banking a certain tournament in the first weekend or well, something. And I feel like it would. I mean, I I love you, Kevin. You're the best. You're awesome. But I think it would have been cooler, like less to watch Kevin live and more to watch. Just be like, okay, let's do five hundred hours of poker. Like let's try and do it. You know, instead of calling it and being like, okay, well we streamed for five hundred hours. Like we don't need to see you in the bathtub. Like I mean, maybe we do. I don't know. But like. <laughs> I don't know. I would have loved to see him get there. It would have been more exciting. Yeah. I kudos to him for the attempt. And yeah. I, I'm sure it met his goals, right? His He was doing it to entertain and to get some subscriptions. And I'm sure that, that was there. Uh, my good colleague, former colleague at Poke News, Adam Lammers, uh, I know was helping out behind the scenes and works with Kevin. Oh, so, cool. yeah. you know, it wasn't just Kevin. Like he had a team behind him that mm -hmm. were also pretty much on, you know, 24 seven as yeah. well. So. No, I'm an old school Kevin Martin fan, like the Church of Ace King days. You know what I mean? I used to watch a lot of Kevin Martin, like seven years years ago or something like that six years ago yeah kevin's always been great you know, we talked last week about reality tv he's not only a poker superstar gg poker ambassador but he's a superstar in the um the reality tv space yeah, for big winning brother, yeah. big brother canada yeah um, and super nice guy too like he's fun to hang around with he's always real positive i like him yeah maybe we'll if he's here for the world series of poker which i'm sure he will be invite him down here to level nine studio maybe Yay. get him uh, in person that could be a lot of come fun. come on down kevin yeah. or maybe he's tired of being in front of the camera <laughs> <laughs> you know? who knows yeah well, that is going to do it for episode 822 of the Poker News Podcast. This was sponsored by WPT Global. Mm -hmm. If you download on Poker News, you can get a deposit bonus. Uh, do us a favor, like, subscribe. We're going to put the button here. You're going to click it. Do us a favor, share it on social media. Let's get this thing popping. And uh, Let's get this thing popping, yeah. <laughs> my boy. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow, and by the time this comes out, the World Series of Poker Circuit is going to be happening just down the street at the Horseshoe. Safe to say. Say we're all gonna we're all gonna play a little bit. A little bit, yeah, I think so. Ladies' vent. Yeah, I'm a full blown addict, so I'm gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and I'm even gonna fire a couple before I have to leave for the WPT voyage. Uh, but we're gonna get a couple episodes in, and then on the ship itself, my plan is to link up with some of my poker news colleagues, find a couple pros to temporarily replace you two, uh, and do a couple poker news podcasts from the actual Virgin Voyage ship. So I think Hell that's yeah. gonna be a lot of, a lot of fun. fun. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, that is going to do it. Until next week, we'll keep a seat open for you. Bye. See you.